Good morning, Awaken. How are you guys doing today? All right. Hey, can we give it up for Elazar? I love Elazar so much. He is so awesome. I call that guy my miracle man because like he, he's just walking in miracles that God keeps pulling off in his life. And it's just so amazing to watch God keep moving in Elazar's life. Uh, my name's Riker. I'm the youth pastor here at Awaken. And today, you know, I get a shot at uh, being on stage. Uh, but before I dive into my message, man, can we give it up for our online audience? Everyone watching at home, we love you guys. You guys are awesome. We wish you were here. <laughs> but uh, uh, also, before I start, I want to thank uh, some people. I want to lift up Pastor Daniel for letting me have the stage, giving me a shot to preach, um, giving the kid a chance, you know, uh, to, say, to say the message that God's really put on my heart. So could we give it up for Pastor Daniel? He's awesome. <clears throat> And then, like, the most important team on the weekend, the tech team and the sound team, these guys make everything happen. So let's cheer for those guys. They're, they're so awesome. I love them. They make me look good, sound good. You guys can hear me because of them. And then last, but definitely not least, definitely most important, I want to lift up my wife, Jessie. She's actually running that whole crew back there. Can we go for my wife, Jessie? Oh, yeah. So, uh... Yeah, so today, I, I just feel like God's really put this message on my heart to dive into this happens in the gym. And that's kind of what I see happening here, is a cloak's thrown on this guy, and he's like, okay, I get it, 100%. You didn't say a word. And then he runs after him. And then uh, without questioning Elisha, Elisha, Elisha goes to Elisha, Elisha, oh my goodness, Lord, thank you for these names, uh, and he goes to Elijah, and he's like, hey, just hold up. I'm going to tell everyone goodbye, and then I'm going to go with you. Like, there was no explanation to what Elisha was being called to, and he didn't question it. He knew that God was in it, and he knew that God was going to do something great. Isn't it cool when God interrupts our everyday life? Isn't it cool when he steps in and just does something awesome and pulls us away from the normal? And so what happened next is he went to celebrate his new life. And Elisha goes and celebrates leaving. He celebrates his new life. So he went on to slaughter cows and burn some plows. He went on to, he went on to just throw a feast, throw a party. Well, you can go back one. I'm not done yet. Sorry. I love you. You're awesome back there. Anyways, he went to slaughter cows and burn plows. He celebrated going to the new with his family and his friends. When he started this new life, he wanted to tell everyone, hey, I'm going with Elijah. This is going to be awesome. And he left behind the good stuff. You see, in this story with Elisha, he's walking and he's working and he's working on the 12th team. And he's working with his family. And he, he's not a man who's like poor. Like Elijah didn't go find some homeless guy on the street. Like this man was working hard. He was a farmer. And he was hard at work in his field. And he was stopped by Elijah with a calling. And he left behind some good stuff in his life. He left behind the good. He left behind something that's not so bad. And what he went on to do is made sure there's no way he could go back to that job. No way he could go back to work in that field. He took care of the ox that, that drove the plow. And then it, the Bible says it took, he took care of all the instruments that went with it and burned it all. Just burned it all to roast the meat and just throw like an awesome party with some steak and brisket. Like all this awesome, oh, you could just imagine the ribs and like everything good. Like it, it was so cool that he did that and he refused to stay behind. Elisha refused to stay where he was at. He refused to, to be just a farmer and work on the farm with mom and pa. He, he refused to stay on the farm. He refused to stay plowing the fields. He refused to stay behind. You see, in the story with Matthew and Jesus, what happens first, uh, what happens in the story with Elijah that lines up with Matthew is, 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 is um, Elijah gives Elisha this cloak. And it's just like what Jesus was talking about. Jesus was talking about getting a new shirt, getting a new garment. And you can't just patch Jesus on your life. You need a new life. And in Elisha's story, the cloak that he receives from Elijah is that new life. It's that new calling. It's that new thing. It's that new thing to walk into that God has called him to. And then the next thing is the wineskin. 
It's the old life. It's the old job, going into the new job. So the Bible doesn't say that, that the, the old wine was bad. It doesn't say that old wine is bad at all. But it says that the new wine is greater, and the new thing that God is doing is so much greater. And you look at Elisha's life, and he had a good job. He had a good, a good career lined up for him that was probably very secure. And then he was called out of it into something new. And then the last thing in this story is like the bride of Christ. Like being the bride of Christ, we're the bride of Christ, and that's awesome. As a church, we're all the bride of Christ, and we follow Jesus. And like his story, it's who Elisha decided to follow next. Who Elisha was called to follow and be committed to in following as the assistant, as that, that guy to walk alongside him to follow Elijah. And so as we jump into this uh, today, like I'm just excited to dive into setting our paths on fire. And that's what I want to talk about first is setting our paths on fire. Setting our paths on fire is, is a way to start getting into the new. You see, we got to slaughter cows and burn some plows to, to get into the new. We got to set our paths on fire. We got to make sure there is no way back to the old. There's no way back to who we were and what we were before Jesus, before we started walking this life. We got to make sure there's no way back. Uh, when I was in uh, the Army in 2016, I was getting ready to deploy. I was getting ready to go to war. And what happened was something very exciting. Uh, my whole military career, we wore the ACU. And that uniform was awful. Uh, there it is right there. That's young Riker and his boy Jake. Uh, that was actually on Veterans Day, by the way. Super veteran-like. But anyways, that's what the old uniform looked like, and, and we got tired of it. And what happened on this thing as we're ready to deploy and get ready, so they, they told us, like, hey, you guys have to wear the new uniforms when you go overseas. You guys can't wear those old things. Because the, the army, after like 15 years or whatever, finally decided that blending in with 70s couches, it wasn't good enough for war. And so they updated our uniforms, and then they looked like this. They worked amazing. No, I'm just kidding. That's not what they looked like. Come on. You guys are like, wow. <laughs> no, that's not the army. This is what they looked like. They look way cooler, way better. That was our last day in that, that uh, not blessed land. Um, that was the day we all went home, and we were thrilled. You could see it on our faces. Um, but anyways, <laughs> yeah, we could cheer for that. Um, oh, can you go back one? Sorry about that. Um, but anyways, like, we, we were celebrating the new. We were celebrating the new uniforms that we had because we were excited. We were stuck in the old, and we weren't allowed to wear those cool uniforms yet because they weren't authorized. But then when we went to war, we had to leave behind the old. And what happened was, was something amazing in the barracks. Uh, we didn't have enough room to take these old uniforms with us. So we just destroyed them. And it was it was one of the best days of my life because <laughs> I ripped apart every single one of those things. And I just remember throwing them in the trash and feeling great because those uniforms, we couldn't carry those into the war. We couldn't carry those into the future. We couldn't carry those into what we were about to go into. And so as we talk about setting our paths off fire, we got to leave some stuff behind that we don't need where we're going. We don't need some of this stuff in our life where we're going. Even though those uniforms were good, they were good to me, I wore them in you know, the first four years of my contract, but where I was going, I couldn't take them with me. Where I was going, I didn't need that. And what it was like was getting a new shirt. It was like getting a new life. That, that parable Jesus talked about was not just slapping a patch on the old. It was getting a new thing. And you see, Elisha gets this new cloak, and that's his new calling into his life. That's the new in Elisha's life. And what happens is in Elisha's life, as you read on, you guys can fact check me, it's in the Bible, just read on. Um, in, around 2 Kings, what's happening with Elisha is that he ends up getting a double portion of Elijah's blessing. 
and he gets a double portion of that anointing. He becomes the successor of Elijah, and that's what that cloak brings. He gets the cloak of Elijah and gets this new new thing, and he does these incredible, amazing miracles. All these crazy things start happening because he got that new cloak in his life. The, the thing about Elisha that I, I just love is that he refused to stay the same. In Elisha's life, he refused to stay just who he was and, and the same in his life. And he kept moving forward to who God was calling him to. And he got over the good. He stepped in into the new and he got over the good because he knew it wasn't what was best for him. You see, our blessing is in the new, and it's in the unknown, and it's what God calls us into. And the good in our life is the old wineskin. The good things in our life are are the old and the things that we know and the things that we're comfortable with and the things that are safe in our life. And those are good things. But they're not necessarily God things. In Elisha's life, he ends up getting this double size, like new wineskin that's double the size for double the anointing, for double the calling in his life. But who in here like needs some new wineskin in their life? Who needs a new outpouring of Jesus? Can anyone in the room relate and kind of want some more Jesus in their life? See, we need double the wine in our life, that double like pouring of Jesus into our life, the filling of Jesus in our life. See, re- refusing to stay the same will bring the desire of the new into our life. When we refuse to stay the same, when we refuse to be who we were uh, before Jesus, to refuse to stay who we were as we're starting to follow Jesus, we will always desire the new if we refuse to stay the same. And who we follow matters. You know, who we follow in this life, it matters. In, in Elijah's story, Elisha fall, starts following Elijah. Elisha's life, he was a farmer. He was surrounded by farmers, and therefore he was a farmer. And one thing I say to youth is like, you guys are hard to handle. No, that's just, that was Elazar's line, not mine. But uh, it's true. No, what I tell youth is like, tell me your five friends, and I will tell you your future. I will tell you what you're going to be like and who you're going to become like. Because the people around you are what influences you the most. And if you're surrounded by farmers, you're just going to be a farmer. If you're surrounded by people who are wanting to drive forward and just are never satisfied with good with, and, and they want more of God in their life, that's what you're going to get. You're, you're surrounded by people who are pointed toward the future. You're going to be after the future in your life. And in the story with Matthew, what happens is he decides to follow Jesus. He decides to step into this new calling. He decides to step into this new life. And what happens is he's surrounded by these disciples. He's surrounded by these people who are driven after one thing. They're driven after following Jesus. They're driven after becoming new. They're driven after uh, what Jesus was teaching them and the new covenant and the new things that God was doing. And the thing is about Matthew's life is it's still impacting all of us right now. We're still impacted by what Matthew did. We're still impacted because Matthew surrounded himself with people who were after God's heart, who were after doing the new that God was calling them to. Um, I'll have uh, Silas come up. Can we give it up for Silas? He's so awesome. He'll be up here in a sec. But as I close this out, uh, about nine months ago is where a huge change in my life came. I I was in a place where it was kind of hard. Like I was struggling as as a youth leader. I was struggling leading the youth ministry. And I needed new in my life. I was in a place where it was very difficult for me and what I wanted God to do is just bring me the new I remember praying to God and seeking God with everything I had I remember the late nights praying and just crying out like God do something in my life change me God I just need more of you I need you to do something in me and God started moving It was a hard time in my life. And where I was, was I was just leading the youth ministry. I was just leading it. 
to be honest, to be true with you guys, I was just leading it. But what God did is he just brought me to a whole new place. He brought me to a new level because I didn't want to stay where I was at. I didn't want to stay just just leading a ministry. I didn't want to stay just doing the thing every Wednesday. I didn't want to stay the same leader. I wanted new in my life. I wanted God to break through in my life. And what, what's happened since then is God has broken through. He has brought the new completely in my life. I went from just a, leading a ministry to where I'm at the place now where I, I, I'm a youth pastor. I am the youth pastor, and I'm actually one of the key leaders here at this church. And God has done that, and God has brought me through everything. And God has brought the new in my life because I was never satisfied with, with where I was and who I was uh, at at the time. And I just wanted who God was making me to be. And so what I want to finish with you guys today is how do we desire the new? How do we desire the new in our life? We got to get past the point of no return. We got to leave no way back in our life. We got to get some pioneers in our life. We got to surround ourselves by some disciples. We got to surround ourselves with these people who are pointed after Jesus or pointed after the future. We got to surround ourselves with these people who want more than just good, who want more than just the old one, who want more than where we're at right now. We got to follow someone who isn't satisfied with good. We got to follow some people that aren't just satisfied with okay and safe and comfort. But we also have to remember what God has called us to. We got to remember who, who God's called us to be. You see in verse 20, in Kings 19, verse 20, he says, remember what I did to you. Remember what I've said. Hey, Elisha, remember. Remember what I said to you. Remember what I've said. And I feel like that's what God speaks into our life is remember that we're made new in Christ Jesus, that we become a new creation when we follow Jesus. And when we follow God, we get a whole new life and a whole new calling. We get a future and a destiny in Jesus. We got to remember that God has called us to the new, not just once, but constantly in Elijah's life. He receives that cloak in the beginning. And what happens is he inherits the cloak of Elijah when he gets torn up into heaven by a whirlwind of fire. And it's amazing. It's this amazing thing that Elisha was able to witness because he was past the point of no return. He couldn't go back to being a farmer because he burnt those plows. He burnt all those instruments. He killed the cows. He left it all behind so that he could become who God was calling him to be to where he could choose life, where he could choose new, where he could choose the future. We gotta choose the, we gotta choose life, we gotta choose new, we gotta choose the future that God has for us. What's so awesome about Jesus is that when he died on the cross and he rose again, he did that so that we could have a choice at eternity. He did it so that we could have a choice into what God was calling us into, that we could choose to follow Jesus, that we don't have to jump through all these hoops of religion anymore, that we just have to say yes to Jesus and follow him. Number two, we got to throw a party. We got to celebrate our new life in Jesus. There's way too many secret Christians out there. We got to get excited about our new life. Like, like people will come in here and be like, I give my life to Jesus. And then like walk out those doors and tell nobody. Man, we got to celebrate our new life. We got to tell everyone from your past that you're following Jesus. Elisha went and told his whole family, probably angry co-workers that now they have to make up for a whole 12th team. But he partied with them. He's like, hey guys, I'm going to the new. I'm following Elisha. God's doing great things. Look at this. Let's eat. Let's celebrate. Let's party together. Matthew did the same thing. He got all of his tax collector friends, all of his sinners that he knew, and he brought them all together to have a party with Jesus. He celebrated the new. He celebrated what God was calling him into. But I want to say this. When we're setting our past on fire, we, we can't burn bridges with people. We can't burn bridges with people that we're going to have to cross someday. 
Because those people in our past, do you know what? Someday you're going to be called to reach those people. And if we burn all those bridges with those people in our past, they will never get to know the love of Jesus from you and what God has done in your life. And so we got to love people. We got to throw a party. We got to go after the future. We got to go after Jesus. And we got to set our past on fire. That's number three. We just got to set our past on fire. Man, we got to burn the things that link us to to good. We got to burn the things that link us to our old life. We got to burn those things and just leave them dead. Leave them in the field. Leave them behind. Let them go. Let, Let everyone feast on the new and what God's doing and celebrate what God is doing. And we got to leave our past successes. It's easy to leave behind the bad stuff, but it's hard to leave behind the good stuff. It's hard to leave behind a success or a great time in your life and just move on to what God's about to do because I guarantee God's going to do something greater than that first place medal you received. God's going to do something greater than that time you led five people to Jesus. God's going to do something greater than that moment you had with Jesus in worship. And God's going to do something greater and new in your life because God continually does new things. Jesus continually calls us into the unknown. He calls us into the new and he calls us into a new future. We got to leave behind some good and go after God. Because there's good things in our life, but there's God things in our life too. And we're called to the God things in our life. Let's not give ourselves a way back to the old. Let's not give ourselves a way back. I'll have the band come up, get set up. So today, under your seats, there, there's a piece of paper. Under your seats, um, this is an Oprah. You don't get a car. I'm sorry. This is Awaken. You get a, a note card. <laughs> but there's a piece of paper. And what I want you guys to do is I want you to write down maybe a good thing, maybe a success, maybe something you've had in your past that, that's holding you back from your future, that's holding you back from what God has called you to do, that's something that God is calling you to in the future. What's holding you back? What's in the way? The easy thing to point out is, yes, sin and and bad stuff in your life, but what good things in your life, too, that you need to let go of, that you need to move on from so that you can go after the future and what God is calling you to next. What are you satisfied with that you need to leave behind? Because we're going to set our paths on fire. We're going to burn this stuff. Write any, anything down that's on your heart. No one's going to read this stuff. We're going to literally burn these things today. We're going to set this stuff on fire. We're going to start a fire in church and celebrate the new in Jesus this morning. We're going to celebrate what God is doing in this place, and we're going to set our paths on fire. We're going to set the good things on fire today. So right now, as you're writing those down, when worship starts, I'll have you guys come forward and just leave them in, the, in these buckets, and then I'll come back up later. So I'm going to invite everyone to stand, and if you're still writing, keep writing. But worship's going to start, and I want you guys to bring those forward into one of these buckets as the worship song is going so we can all set our past on fire today.